सो हेलो माई डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक वेलकम टू योर चैनल कुकिंग एस्ट्रोलॉजी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर सब्सक्राइबिंग माई चैनल एंड लाइक यू माई वीडियो थैंक्स लॉट सो टूडे इन दिस वीडियो लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड प्लेनेट केतु इन वेदिक एस्ट्रोलॉजी एंड हाउ प्लेनेट केतु विल हेल्प यू टू एग्जीक्यूट योर पास्ट लाइफ कारमाज इन दिस प्रेजेंट लाइफ आई नो मेनी ऑफ यू आर फेमिलियर विद केतु इज अ प्लेनेट ऑफ स्परिचुअलिटी केतु रेप्रजेंट्स योगा meditation even spirituality ketu is a headless entity so ketu don't have the capacity to do any kind of a thinking ketu is also the planet that represents flags like you have achieved something so you put some flag up there if you visit any temples okay all the temples in india devoted to lord shiva krishna devi temples they are going to have that flag up there so that flag association is purely seen with planet ketu also ketu is the planet of detachment at the same time ketu is the planet of secludedness ketu is also that kind of a planet that represents the non satisfaction like in whichever areas the ketu is posited so that area is going to bring lot of non satisfaction from that particular areas of your life but these are the generalized concept of ketu the advanced concept of ketu is somewhat connected with the execution of past life karmas in this present life first of all you need to here identify four important things in your horoscope first of all look in which house ketu is posited there are total 12 houses identification of house is very important secondly try to identify which zodiac sign ketu is posited thirdly you need to identify the planets that are in conjunction with the ketu and fourth you need to identify in whichever house the ketu is posited so where that house lord is going so these are the four parameters that you first of all need to identify before going much deeper into the execution of the karmas now ketu is the planet which also represents the sign of scorpio the sign of scorpio in vedic astrology is actually governed by planet mars and uh, the planet ketu is also co ruling the sign of scorpio along with planet mars but the ketu energy along with that scorpio energy is going to be more intensified form of energy this is not a aggressive energy okay mars and scorpio connection is going to make it a, as a bit aggressive energy because mars is connected with the action oriented side whereas ketu energy with the sign of scorpio energy is more connected with the spiritual aspect that is the hidden parts okay these are the things which you cannot see but only sense and feel any sort of hallucinations maybe if you are going to meet with any person the very first time and you sense some deep connection with them maybe after having the breakup the other person have moved on and become very difficult for you to move on from that relation maybe you are doing a job at some place and you find someone up there or some vibes are actually going to be matching so that energy which you can only sense and feel is actually ketu in the sign of scorpio or in whichever house ketu is posited ketu is bringing the scorpio energy in that particular area of your life if ketu is posited in the fifth house of your children okay irrespective of where the sign of scorpio is going to be the sign of scorpio energy is always going to be present where ketu is posited so that is going to be the mystical house in your horoscope and that is particularly the house where the execution of karmas are going to be happening in your life now as you all familiar with the past life deeds okay fifth house is the house in astrology that represents your past life deeds or the karmas that you have performed in the past life and that what kind of a storage of karma that you have bring forth in this life is actually seen through the fifth house now that fifth house karma in your horoscope is actually getting executed with the help of planet ketu and the sign of scorpio so here you need to identify which house my ketu is posited now whichever house the ketu is going to be posited you need to be very very careful of that particular area because you need to understand this is retrograde and rahu is also retrograde so they are respecting one another i will cover the rahu part in one separate video but understanding ketu here so ketu is a retrograde planet and in our jyotish shastra retrograde simply means vakri graha okay so rahu and ketu are always vakri they are always retrograde 
and they move in the backward direction. Now, in whichever house the Ketu is posited, it means that is the particularly that is the area or that is the house in your chart that have the capacity to execute the karmas from the past life into this present life. If for example, Ketu is posited in the seventh house of your marriage and married life, it means your life partner will help you in the execution of your karmas. If it is posited in the fifth house of your children, it means your children, they will help you to execute your past life karmas in this present life. If it is posited in the sixth house, that is the house of your enemies. So your enemies will eventually help you to execute that past life karmas in this present life. Similarly, with the fourth house, mother is going to do that thing. With the third house, your siblings are going to do it. With the second house, family is going to do it. Similarly, in the Lagna, you yourself is going to be responsible for the execution of karma. That is your physical self that is more connected with the transformative energy. If it is posited in the specifically 12th house, it means any sort of foreign travel or traveling to some distance location will help you in the execution of that karmas. 12th house is the house of foreign land and foreign country. Suppose you are right now staying up there and suddenly you are applying for some job and you next day landed into some different land, foreign country. Or maybe you are going up there for taking some education, okay? And suddenly suppose as soon as you are traveling into the foreign country, at the time of taking that education, you meet with some girl or maybe with some boy. Now, why the event of moving into the foreign country is going to trigger the event of meeting with some stranger? Now, what that karmic connection with that stranger is going to be? That is the stranger which will help you in the unfoldment of the karmas related to Ketu. Similarly, it's placement in the 11th house of your professional friend circle. So most of the time in the 11th house, the execution is going to be happening through your own professional friend circle. Some are going to cheat you or maybe some are not going to treat you very well in your life. So these are the individuals that are coming in your life for certain duration of time. This is not like they are going to be permanently staying over there. Although in certain zodiac signs, in certain nakshatras, Ketu is the representation of the Drid Karma. Dhrid Karma means the fixed karma that is unchangeable. So you need to like carry the burden of that karma till your last breath. Similarly, in the 10th house of your career. So your reputation is going to be greatly going to suffer if Ketu is particularly in the 10th house. That is why I made the video in the Ketu in the 10th house. This is going to create a splitting career pattern. Like you are having a 40 years of career spam. So you are changing or shifting the like jobs like one year doing their next two to three years working somewhere else, two, three years working somewhere else. So you are constantly changing. Similarly, in the ninth house, your gurus will eventually help you to unfold that karmas. Similarly, in the eighth house, I will tell you that is also connected with that physical transformation energy. You are reading something, some secret energy is going to come after you. It may be taking you into the field of occult sciences, like as learning astrology, numerology, palmistry. All these things are possible only because of planet Ketu. So I hope you understand in the 12 houses, what is the significance of Ketu connected with that areas and how that particular areas will help you in the unfoldment of that karmas in your life. The next most important point is Ketu is also the planet that is the representation of the spiritual realm which is present inside you. Now, after dealing with the karmas with one, one, one particular house in whichever house your Ketu is posited. So, when you are going to deal with all that karma, okay, it may be bad karma or it may be good karma, okay. Now, after dealing with all such karmas in your life, then what Ketu is going to do? This will give you steep inclination towards spirituality. You then individuals, you no longer interested into the materialistic realm. Then Ketu is going to grip you in such a way that is going to take you more towards the secludedness, towards the loneliness. So you are becoming more and more lonely. You are in that complete pathway of spirituality in your life. Now Ketu is going to drag you completely into that particular area. Because you need to understand one thing here. In whichever house Ketu is posited, that is going to be the major house of non-satisfaction. You will never ever going to be satisfied from that particular area. If it is posited in the 11th house of your incoming gains, no matter even if you acquire billion dollar. 
or even a trilli trillion dollar, it become very difficult for you to reap out the satisfaction from that particular area in your life. Satisfaction will not come, understand one thing. Because Ketu represents that unfinished karmas. Maybe in the past life, you have did the same thing wrong towards someone and that same person is coming in this present life and doing that same bad thing towards you. And karma is going to hit you not only in the negative side of the life, this will hit you in the positive side. You have did something good towards others and that same karma Ketu will help you to bring towards that area. Now, in from which side that karma is coming, that is where the Ketu is posited. Similarly, the controller, okay, suppose Ketu is posited in the zodiac sign of Leo in your horoscope. Now, Leo is ruled by planet Sun. That is the depositor. Now, you need to secondly identify the depositor, okay, like where that planet is moving, okay. That is where the execution of karma from that particular area is going towards that area. For example, you are a Kal Purusha Kundli, natural Aries ascendant. The sign of Leo is posited in the fifth house. Ketu is present over there. And the Surya, planet Sun, that is the controller of the sign of Leo is suppose moving in the 11th house. In the zodiac sign of Aquarius. Suppose this is just one example. Now you need to identify first of all Ketu, as I told you, karma related to the children that is seen through fifth house. Now the depositor, if it is moving in the 11th house of the incoming gains, it means children plus money, wealth and desires. These things are getting attached. Either you are going to gain a lot of money because of the children or either you are going to lose a great amount of money because of children, because of that particular combination. Because in whichever house the depositor is going, it means Ketu final event of karma will going towards that area. Ketu energy is mostly going to flow towards that area. Even you need to third importantly check the planetary conjunctions also like which planet my Ketu is in conjunction with. If it is in conjunction with most of the planets, maybe Chandra, that is planet Moon, okay. Now, Moon is the representation of a mother. It means some deadly amount of sufferings are going to be coming from the mother side into your life. And after that, receiving the sufferings, you are becoming more spiritual person. Now, after you are becoming the more spiritual person, the next is to identify where the depositor is posited. And thirdly, check the conjunction of the planets as well. If it, Ketu is with planet Mercury, planet Sun, Moon, Jupiter, like which areas are going to be acting as that supporting structure towards this Ketu. Because if Ketu is in conjunction with most of the planets in your horoscope, it means there is going to be some major karma that you need to deal in this present life. You cannot escape it because Ketu energy is just like the energy of Scorpio that is fear, that is transformation, that is hidden. So you might not be knowing what is going to be happening if Ketu is up there. Suppose there is one small baby right now he is born, okay. You looked into his horoscope and Ketu is posited maybe in the 10th house along with planet Sun in the sign of Capricorn. So maybe initially you might not be able to recognize the unfoldment like which area that Ketu is going to unfold its karma. But as soon as the child is going to grow, the fatherly karma is going to impact that child. Now I'm not saying father is going to be bad in this case. I'm not using that word. But fatherly karma is going to impact this person in the more deeper manner rather than any other karma. And this is from the past life. You are manifesting these things into your life. This is a short, short indicator. If it is in the seventh house of your marriage and relationships or even if it is in conjunction with Venus most of the time. I made one very beautiful video of Venus and Ketu conjunction. You can please check out that video in the playlist section. Two planetary conjunction. Now, Venus is naturally the significant of love life relationships. So, whosoever is going to be entering in your life, whosoever is going to become your life partner, it may be your husband, it may be your wife. So, that person is going to have some great linkage of karmas with you that is coming from the past life into this present life. Don't think like that I have performed all the bad karmas in this life, so that is why I am receiving the punishment. Or don't think like that I have did all the good karmas in this life so I'm going to receive all the blessings right now. No. That is the Siddhant of Ketu that is going to operate by its own rules and regulations. That is why Ketu is represented with the flax also. Flax is the representation of achievement. You have achieved something or you have conquered something. And you will only be able to conquer something first of all if you will be able to conquer yourself. That is your desires. 
directly opposite to Ketu is always Rahu that will give rise to desires. Like I need something in my life. I need this thing. I need that thing. I need that thing. But Rahu don't know where to stop actually. Initially, you might going to like maybe in my dream, if I have a big home, a very big car and a very good family. So then might be I'm going to getting satisfied. Now, when you receive all that thing, na, then once again, Rahu will immediately get activated. Now I need one bigger home, much bigger, much bigger car. I need to fill the space. Ketu is emptiness and Rahu is filling that empty spaces. This is just like the pulling and pushing of energy in one direction and in one direction. Ketu will always create a vacuum in your in your in your life. That is why you feel secludedness, loneliness. You are not connected with your family if it is in the second house. No connection with the siblings in the third house. You also you feel said the discontent, okay, up there. That is the emptiness part. Now what Rahu will do? Rahu will fill that emptiness. So Rahu is going to fill that thing, okay. Ketu will always try to get empty, empty, like let me empty out everything so that I can feel light. The heaviness part is actually coming from Rahu. Because Rahu don't understand where I need to stop actually. Okay, I have purchased one car, then next car, then next 25, 50 cars I'm having in my life. Like, like where to go actually? Maybe I will purchase like 365 cars for like every single day. So Rahu don't know how to stop. As soon as Ketu is asking Rahu to please immediately stop that thing because I need some vacuum. That is why most of the individuals in the 21st century, they fail to maintain a perfect balance between the spiritual side and the materialistic side of the life. There are many individuals that are coming to me for taking the spiritual consultations because they don't know how to create a balance between the Rahu and Ketu axis. If Rahu is materialism, so how much materialism is necessary in my life? If Ketu is spirituality, so how much spirituality is necessary in my life? Because there are going to be certain combinations where the spiritual evolvement of a human being will only going to come after achieving the enough materialistic desires in your life. There are certain combinations present over there. Because most of the individuals that are watching my videos, they are family persons, okay? You are not a sadhu or a saint watching this video. Maybe if you are watching it, then pranam from my side. But you are not a saint or you are not a sadhu. 99% of the population in this universe is actually involved in the grist ashram. They have to their own responsibilities to fulfill. Responsibilities towards their family, towards their wife, towards their kids, towards their husband, towards society in general. So they are having certain responsibilities which they need to fulfill. But without that creating of empty spaces, that emptiness inside you, you will feel completely fulfilled. And that is where like the tightness part will come inside you. This is known as bandhan. Like I feel bonded by the society, by family, by everything. So you want to get out. Now you are looking for the escape routes. It may be you are watching the shots over the YouTube. Why you are doing that thing? Your mind is not understanding that part. But it means you are looking for some escape route from this current world. You are traveling to some distant lands. You are going into jungle, going into parks, sitting up there. But your mind is somewhere else. Why this thing is happening? Because Ketu is that escape route. You need to understand one thing. Emptiness is seen through Ketu. And emptiness is very, very, very important. If you are completely filled with everything all the time, that is Rahu, you will not be able to experience your inner joy. The inner joy or inner satisfaction is only going to come when you are going to experience that emptiness in your life. The very best way to create emptiness is by doing fasting. Regular fasting, weekly basis, try to do fasting on maybe Monday and then Friday. Monday, Wednesday, two days, okay, complete fasting, 24 hours, don't eat anything. Because if you are not eating anything, now if you are on a fast, it means you are killing your desires. Desires are coming for eating a delicious food, but you are killing that desires. Now, killing of that desires is also seen from planet Ketu. It means you are activating Ketu in your horoscope. That is the food desires. Rahu is that desire and Ketu is non-desiring. I'm not desiring anything. Suppose you want to plan a vacation, like I need to go somewhere else. I need to purchase new bag. I need to purchase some new thing. Maybe new watch, new jewelry, new clothes. I need something new because Rahu wants to fill everything up. And that is where this universe is operating. 
you see most of the hollownesses up there and there is going to be a lot of field spaces up there. So all the field spaces in the universe, they are ruled by planet Rahu because Rahu is filling that thing. Have you observed when you are driving in a car and suppose there is red light in front of you that is coming? So at the red light, you are stopping your car, car up there, okay? And suppose the timer of maybe 70 seconds is up there. Now in that second 70 second timer, most of the cars are also or maybe bikes are coming from the back, back side and they are filling that emptiness. They are filling that empty spaces. They are not like that one car is up there and second is like stopping maybe way beyond that car. No, they are coming in a structured way and they are just like, okay. Why they are doing that thing? Because that is Rahu. Rahu wants to fill the emptiness or fill the empty spaces. Now, once that timer goes up to, okay, three seconds, two, one and zero and you are going. Now that is Ketu. Ketu is releasing the energy. Rahu is actually holding that energy tightly. And when Ketu comes, that all you see, all the energies are released. Some cars are moving in this direction, some are in this or that direction. So you are moving. So that emptiness is created by Ketu. And this is very necessary for your spiritual sadhana on day to day basis. I am very happy that many of my viewers that are watching this videos, they are involved in the Kriya Yogas. And I even keep on emphasizing like do lot of pranayam, focus upon doing the hat yogas, even the meditation part or do some physical activity so that you can create that emptiness. Without creating that hollow part, it becomes very difficult for you to experience the true joy in your life. Now, I hope you understand how that karmic connection of Ketu is created with that creating emptiness. This is the solution actually. Now, in whichever house your Ketu is now out of all the 12 houses, create some gap or distance from that area. If it is in the fourth house of your mother, na, create, a, create some distance from the mother. Create some boundaries up there. Don't go there. Don't try to indulge in that matters. Because if you are indulging, you are activating Rahu. But if you are not indulging, if you are not participating, you are activating Ketu. And that is where Ketu wants you to teach every every one of you. Like you need to understand that emptiness part, that completely cutting off your desires, maybe for once complete day by doing a fasting will also going to help you in the much better way. And this is the path of happiness. I have seen many individuals like doing spiritual sadhanas, very highly involved in the mantra chantings over the Rakshmala, doing spiritual sadhanas most of the time very disciplined with their sadhana. So Ketu then will not give them the negative impacts. They have the capacity to experience the happiness from the Ketu in that particular area. So that discipline and doing continuous sadhana is the simple remedy in your horoscope. So I hope you have gained some different or unique perspective of Ketu in this video with me. If you are having any queries, any consultations with regards to your Ketu placement, any other marriage, career, spiritual or even business consultation, so do let me know. I will try my best to respond you back as soon as possible. Till then, please subscribe my channel below. And make sure to hit the like button if you really enjoyed this video. And please don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well. And I will try my best to respond you back as soon as possible. And I will get back to your new videos very soon. Hari Om Namah Shivaya.